Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I'm going to be showing you the parts you need to build a powerful video editing PC for $1,500 plus dollars. This build is going to make it easy to edit 4K, 6K, or even 8K or RAW video in Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, or basically any other video editing software other than Final Cut, which is Mac only. And side note, if you want to edit photos or mix music, edit 3D and After Effects, or even game and stream, this will be a fantastic choice for you. I'm also going to be showing you some upgraded parts you can buy that will increase your cost but have the potential to dramatically improve the speed of your editing. Now there are two quick things we need to talk about before we talk about parts for this build. First, all of the parts for this build will be linked down in the video description and will also be on my kit page where they will be nicely organized for you to check out. Second, this build is going to detail the parts that you need to purchase, not how to put them together. I have good news though, I made a video a while back detailing exactly how to put together a video editing PC from open the boxes all the way to turning it on and those instructions will still apply to this build as well. It's not hard, it's kind of like Legos. I will link to that video in the corner and down in the video description. Now it's time to jump into this 1500 plus video editing PC build and let's start with the CPU. The brain of the computer here is arguably the most important part because the more cores and threads your computer has, the faster your videos will edit and render. I would recommend purchasing the Intel Core i7-12700K processor with 12 cores and 20 threads of performance for 382 bucks. This processor is really in the sweet spot for power and price. But I hear you now saying, Matt, the sweet spot's great and all, but what else you got? Isn't there something more powerful that won't completely break the bank? All right, if you have more to spend, I would go with the Intel Core i9 12900K processor, which is going to take you from 12 cores and 20 threads to 16 cores and 24 threads of performance for a few hundred dollars more. This is a stellar CPU and should be able to handle 4K, 6K, 8K. No matter the case, this thing should handle it. Moving on, let's talk about cooling for both of these CPUs. Unfortunately, neither of them come with a cooler, so you are going to have to buy aftermarket, but don't worry, I have some options for you. First, if you want to save a bit, the Noctua NH-U9S is a great CPU air cooler that's a bit more budget friendly at 58 bucks at the time of making this video, and it should work well. But if you want to spend a bit more, the Noctua NH-D15 is pretty universally heralded as one of the best air coolers you can buy for your CPU today, and I think it's worth the upgrade at $40 more. Of course, if you want to water cool your computer, because that's what all the cool kids are doing these days, the NZXT Kraken X63 is a great and easy to use option that will fit in the computer cases that I recommend in this video. Moving on, let's talk about the motherboard. This is what's going to hold your CPU, RAM, graphics card, etc., and make them all work together. And here is where you have a choice. Currently, in the computer world, we're seeing a shift from motherboards that support DDR4 memory to DDR5 memory. In short, this basically means that things are going to get faster. But this also means that you have a choice between a cheaper motherboard that supports DDR4 or a more expensive motherboard that supports DDR5. So for your first choice, I would go with the MSI Pro Z690A DDR4 Wi-Fi motherboard for 239 bucks. This is a great motherboard with a lot of features, including Wi-Fi, so you don't need to purchase an external USB Wi-Fi adapter or anything like that. As I said though, this motherboard only supports DDR4 memory, which is still plenty fast, but not the most cutting edge available today. Because of that, if you want to go with DDR5 memory, my second recommendation for you is for the similarly named MSI Pro Z690A Wi-Fi motherboard for 249 bucks. Notice that this one doesn't say DDR4, which is how you know that it's the DDR5 version. Aside from this motherboard supporting DDR5, it is very similar to the DDR4 version, just a bit more future-proofed. Now, let's talk about RAM, AKA memory, which as I said, you either need to choose DDR4 or DDR5 RAM for your computer. And to be clear, a DDR5 motherboard is not backwards compatible with DDR4 memory. So if you choose to buy the DDR4 motherboard, make sure you buy the DDR4 RAM. And likewise, if you buy the DDR5 motherboard, buy DDR5 RAM. Otherwise, 
It's not gonna work. Got it? Okay, so for DDR4 RAM, if you choose to go with that, I recommend purchasing at least 32 gigabytes of silicon power gaming RAM at 3200 megahertz. I had 32 gigabytes of RAM in my editing desktop for years and it was enough to handle 4K footage, but I do want you to be aware that I did notice that my computer was starting to run out of RAM when I was editing and rendering high resolution footage. To prevent yourself from running out of RAM, if you find yourself oftentimes rendering longer 4K videos or videos that are higher resolution than 4K, I would purchase 64 gigabytes of Corsair Video Vengeance LPX RAM at 3200 megahertz for $290 instead. That should be plenty for video editing. Now, let's talk DDR5 RAM. If you go with a DDR5 motherboard, you're gonna need DDR5 RAM. And the good news is that I recommend 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance 5200 megahertz RAM, which is much faster than DDR4. The con though is that this RAM is much more expensive at $314. And if you want to upgrade to 64 gigs of DDR5, this is possible, but <laughs> I would prepare to spend 600 plus dollars for it. So to wrap up the RAM and motherboard section of this video, DDR5 is faster, but if I was buying a computer these days, I don't think it's necessarily worth the price premium, and I would probably go with the DDR4 motherboard and RAM until the prices drop. Once DDR5 RAM drops by about $100 or so, I would then go with a DDR5 build. So I would check the prices on these parts when you're looking them up and then make your decision whether you go with DDR4 or DDR5. Next, you have the SSD. This is what's going to store your operating system and any programs you want to use with your computer. One of the best price to size and performance options right now is gonna come from Sabrent with their one terabyte Rocket M.2 SSD for 130 bucks. If you have a bigger budget and want an even faster option though, you gotta check out the Western Digital Black SN850. This SSD is blazing fast. Please do keep in mind that I only recommend using the SSD to store your programs. For the fastest video editing speed, it's best to have one SSD that holds your programs and another SSD or regular hard drive to store your video files. Because I'm someone that travels a lot, I would recommend purchasing an external hard drive or SSD to store your video files on as you edit. Alternatively, this computer's case will support internal hard drives and SSDs, so you could go that route too. I'll be sure to link to hard drives and SSDs that I recommend, both internal and external, in the video description. Moving on, it's now time to talk about one of the most exciting parts of the computer, the graphics card. And this is where this build video is gonna go a bit off the rails. See, Nvidia and AMD keep designing new graphics cards, but there are major issues in the supply chain and many companies are having difficulty keeping cards in stock. It really is the perfect storm of a shortage of workers building these cards due to the pandemic, everyone staying at home and wanting to play computer games, also due to the pandemic, cryptocurrency mining, and also, unfortunately, there are scalpers that are using bots to buy up most of the graphics card supplies as soon as they're in stock and then turn around and sell them on eBay at a massive price markup, usually triple the MSRP. Because of all these issues, it is quite difficult to buy a graphics card for a reasonable price these days, which makes buying a video editing computer on a budget even more difficult. This is actually why I've said this video is about helping you find a video editing PC for $1,500 plus dollars, but I haven't given you an exact amount that you're gonna pay because the prices for graphics cards vary so much right now depending on what's in stock. I've estimated you're gonna end up spending approximately $1,500, but it could be more or it could be less. Don't worry though. Regardless, I'm here to help you save money. So the first thing you need to know is there still is one guaranteed way to get a decent graphics card for a reasonable price, and that is to purchase a pre-built computer. Yes, strangely enough, in a video all about buying parts to build your computer, I'm telling you not to do that, but here we are. We live in a strange world right now. Here's the good news. I've actually recently made a video sharing with you some great options for pre-built video editing PCs for under a thousand bucks, and I'll link to that video below if you want to watch it. Of course, there are many pre-built video editing PCs that cost more than a thousand dollars that are much more powerful, but I haven't made a video about that yet, so please leave me a comment down below if you want me to make that video. By all means, regardless, I want you to build your own video editing computer, but if you start looking at graphics cards and they're out of stock and you get discouraged, save that pre-built video editing computer video to your favorites and come back to it as an option for you to at least be able to buy a video editing computer. Moving on, let's talk about finding you a graphics card. 
In the past, I've recommended one particular brand and model of graphics card because cards would usually stay in stock. But now, instead of just one brand and model, I'm gonna recommend you several brands and models of card. And so when you're buying a graphics card, you have the maximum chance of being able to find one in stock for a reasonable price. So here are my budget graphics card recommendations. First, let's talk brands. When you're looking for a graphics card, you're gonna see a lot of brands like Asus, MSI, EVGA, Gigabyte, Zotac, PNY. There are a ton. In my experience for video editing, it doesn't make a huge difference which brand you buy from. And with this shortage, we're more concerned about actually finding a graphics card in stock. So if you find a card from any of the above brands, I would say you're probably good to go, as long as the card doesn't have a ton of horrible reviews online. So if all those manufacturers are generally good, which specific model of card should you buy? I've got a lot of options for you. Starting with cheaper, I would recommend the NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti, RTX 3070, and 3070 Ti. These cards have a retail MSRP of around 400 to 600 bucks and should perform very well for video editing. If you can find them in stock new and not being sold for an outrageous price, I think they're great. But if you have more to spend and want more power, because who doesn't want more power? In that case, I would consider the NVIDIA 3080, 3090 Ti, 3090, 3090 Ti, AMD 6800 XT, and 6900 XT. These cards retail for approximately $650 to $700 and up. So just like the cheaper options, I would wait until you can get one of these for something close to the MSRP and you should be good. I will link below to all these cards that I just talked about that are in stock, but I can't guarantee that they'll stay in stock because these things change from hour to hour and really minute to minute. Because stock can be so hard to keep up with, I recommend setting up stock alerts at Amazon, Newegg, and B&H so you can be notified as soon as they come back in stock. In addition, if you live close to a micro center or Best Buy and can go in person to the store, there's a much better chance that you may be able to find one in stock at a physical location. Last thing about graphics cards, if you find a store that has them in stock, please come back to this video and leave a comment telling others so they can filter by new comments and hopefully buy one too. Almost finished with this build, we need to talk about the power supply in the case, and let's start with the case that you'll put all of these parts inside. We're changing things up from my previous builds too with a PC case from Corsair, the $105 4000D Airflow Mid Tower case, and as the name implies, it offers great airflow. In the past, I've recommended the NZXT H510, one of the main reasons being that my PC build guide video where I show you how to put everything together uses that specific case. But I really want you to have a case with good airflow, which is why I'm recommending the Corsair. And do not worry, all of the parts that will go into this new case very similarly to the NZXT case, so you should still be able to follow along as I build the computer. Now, I do want you to be aware that this case does not have any 5.25 inch drive base, meaning that you're not gonna be able to install a CD, DVD, or Blu-ray burner inside this case. The good news is that you can pick up an external DVD burner for around 25 bucks and an external Blu-ray burner for less than 100. If you really want a case with a 5.25 inch drive base, you can install an internal DVD or Blu-ray burner. I would recommend the Corsair 450D for 130 bucks. This case still offers a great airflow and you can get those drive bays as well. Very last part, let's cover the power supply, which gives this computer the sweet, sweet electricity it craves. To make sure that you have enough power for these graphics cards, I would go with the EVGA Supernova 850 watt power supply, which currently comes in at 110 bucks. As a plus two, this power supply is fully modular, so you should be able to make a really clean PC build without a lot of wires. With the power supply chosen, congratulations. That is your $1,500 plus video editing PC. Of course, there are accessories that you'll need to purchase as well, such as a mouse, keyboard, speakers, and monitor, but a lot of those are gonna come down to your personal preferences. I will link down in the description and on my kit page to the mouse, keyboard, and speakers, and both a 1080p and 4K monitor for you to purchase. Because you are building a monster editing PC, I would definitely recommend a 4K monitor to go with it. Also, I have a video editing monitor by buyer's guide if you want to check that out and find a great monitor that's color accurate for your videos. I'll link to that video in the corner and in the video description. As far as the operating system goes, I would recommend Windows 10, and I've included a link down in the description to a Tom's Hardware article where you can read about how to get a copy of Windows 10 for free or for very cheap. And then, once you have Windows 10, you can then upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Lastly, we've nearly made it to the end of this video, but I want to take a second to restate again how crazy the computer industry is right now and how hard it is to find parts. Heck, even in the time it took me to research all the parts for this build and edit this video, parts have gone out of stock and I had to re-record parts of it 
to make it work. Because of that, I want to give you one final alternative. If you've made it through all this video and you've looked at all the parts and you're seeing that some are out of stock, first of all, by all means, comment and let me know and I'll try to update those links. But even then, as weird as it is to say, considering this is a video about building a video editing PC, I think that you should also consider purchasing an Apple computer with one of their M1 chips. I talk more about this computer in my pre-built video editing PC video, but to sum it up, you can get an M1 Mac mini with 16 gigs of RAM for under a thousand bucks, and it's gonna be a very capable computer for 4K video editing. In addition, at the time of making this video, Apple has released their new MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch computers with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. And those are both very capable for video editing. I made a video buyer's guide for these MacBook laptops that I will link in the description as well. And in the future, when Apple comes out with an updated iMac Pro or whatever they want to call it that uses the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips in a more desktop form factor, I will make a buyer's guide for those computers too. With that, thank you so much for watching. It would be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you wanna see more videos like it in the future. Thanks and have a great day.